It is an issue that seems to have faded off, especially with the ethics and anti-corruption giving a clean bill on the transactions involving euro bond. But barely a week, court principal Roy Lodinga issues a list, the so-called persons of interest, raising into questions on who is fooling who. We have a treasury that allows expenditures to happen without following the clear laid down constitution uh, pr procedures. You have the control of budget who, whose office has already engaged itself in a contradictory. On one point, it gives information that we have a, 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 we have we have with us a clear indication that money was withdrawn and spent without authorization. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they now, after I think some pressure somewhere, they now retract back that statement. That raises a serious credibility question about the Office of the Control of Budget and its ability to withstand political pressure. Mm -hmm. Kenyans had a reason why they created that office. Then from there, ESCC is a disaster. I think I don't even talk about ethics and anti-corruption commission. But the man in which the probe was undertaken is what the court principal now seems to be dissatisfied with. And what could bring a twist to the old saga given the fact that the transactions were wired in different international banking institutions, including JP Morgan's Chase Bank and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. It was not that these people were directly transacting the <laughs> money within them with 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 the with the or they had opened bank accounts with americans banks and other but there is a direct correlation that part of the proceeds that were paid to some of these individuals happened to have passed via an american bank that small entry there's something you call the foreign corrupt uh, 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 something act it's the one that american would invoke the bond's prevailing market terms of acquisition and service is one that has generated further heated debates on its impact on the taxpayer. After decade-long awaited Fed's rates revision, which was anticipated to create a shake in the global markets. By virtue of those loans, any small thing that happens within the global financial system is going to have for the first time affect us as a country. So this is not just a small talk of the streets that people are, are, are making it. We made a fatal mistake of not thinking through the entire of how to finance start railway gauge if you really needed that railway. I have never been convinced we needed one. Two is now Eurobot. These are two f big floating loans at the international financial system. That has a direct bearing to us for the first time as a country. Meanwhile, the bickering between Code and Jubilee affiliates continues day after day as Jubilee demands more substantial evidence from Code while the opposition demands resignation of, among others, the Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich, leaving more queries than answers. In this regard, at this point, I want to mention the persons of interest in the Eurobond saga. One, Mr. Joseph Kenyo, Chief of, uh, of Staff in the Presidency and Head of Civil Service. Two, Mr. Henry Rotich, Cabinet Secretary, National Treasury. Three, Dr. Patrick Kamau Thuge, Principal Secretary, National Treasury. Four, Mr. Bernard Dungu, Accountant General, National Treasury. Five, Jairus Mohamed Nyaoga, Chairman, the Board of uh, Directors of Central Bank of Kenya. Six, Professor Njogu Nandungu, former governor, Central Bank of Kenya. Seven, Mr. John Birech, director, financial uh, markets, Central Bank of Kenya. Eight, Mr. Moses Mudui, manager, financial markets, Central Bank of Kenya. We asked Kenyans to ignore the code leader with the contempt that he deserves. Number two, and to support our call, which I have just stated, it should not be lost on Kenyans that this is not the first time the code leader and his friends are making such reckless, baseless, and malicious allegations. This is not the first time. 
It is a plot that will thicken in a bid to determine the truth in Raila's claims and the direction which the investigations will take. The Auditor General Edward Uko's office being the closest in the offing on whether the country indeed cannot account for a staggering 140 billion shillings. Daniel Misiani, GBS.